Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Be sure to check me out over on Rumble. There you'll find all of my stuff from YouTube, plus my political and social commentary and weekly current events which YouTube frowns on. Links to my Rumble channel as well as my other YouTube channels and links to let you order my books are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a recon the role-playing game story. I'm calling it Fugitives from Injustice. Now, I don't usually like to tackle social issues in tabletop role-playing games, but there is one social issue that needs to be tackled in any arena, and that issue is racism. I'm not a believer in systemic racism because even when our forefathers wrote the Declaration of Independence, the colonies who supported slavery had to force the rest, of, the rest to allow it by withholding their endorsements of that quintessential document. The Civil War was fought because the Southern Democrats <clears throat> wanted to keep their slaves and the Northern Republicans, the abolitionists, had to force them to stop that abhorrent practice. Now that being said, they, there are racists, they are evil, and they need to be opposed at every opportunity. Now that the, now that the soapbox has been safely stored away, Get on with the story. Years ago, my friends Ray, Jerry, Larry, and Earl were playing with me in my friend Kevin's game. Kevin ran a good game. He was an excellent, excellent uh, game master, mission director, dungeon master. He was imaginative and always found ways to put us in awkward situations, and those are the ones you like. You know, if you're prepared for every contingency, nothing surprises you. But if you're not, everything surprises you. In the game, we had just finished a mission as mercenaries, and we were heading back to Texas. That's where we were based. We were driving from Florida, and we're passing through Georgia in 1974. Yeah. We stopped in to eat at a little roadside diner. The waitress wasn't very friendly, and when we ordered, she made it a point to point out that Ray couldn't eat there because the boss wouldn't take his money. I replied that he'd better because Ray was treating us all to the meal. The boss and several other patrons walked over. Long story short, we turned that diner into kindling in about 10 minutes. We tore that place up. And the, the boss and his buddies, yeah, they did not, they, they weren't happy. Then, of course, the local sheriff showed up with his deputies and arrested us all. You, you can be the best fighter in the world, but guns are the great equalizer. That's why I'm a big advocate of women getting your concealed carry. You know, rapists... They, uh, they tend not to repeat offend when you shoot him in the chest four times. I'm just saying. Rather than await trial in jail, <clears throat> they took us directly to a work farm where they were reclaiming a swamp. It became evident that we five were not intended to make it to trial. They stuck us in the worst part of the swamp with the malaria, the poison snakes, and the alligators. Mistake they made was giving us shovels and picks. We, of course, clocked the guards and ran for it. Vietnam was a great teacher on how to survive in a swamp, let me tell you. <clears throat> it took us six days, but we were able to make it across the county line. That sheriff lost four deputies, but we made it. We caught a ride to a courthouse and pled our case. Turns out, we were not the first people who had escaped that farm. The sheriff had a penchant for making undesirables disappear in that swamp. Being wealthy mercenaries, we hired the best lawyers and proved our innocence. Then, Ray ran, with our help, and became the governor. That sheriff found it difficult to operate with four special investigators directly from the governor's office, hounding his every move. It was awesome. <clears throat> he finally got angry enough to pull his gun on us, and we were forced to defend ourselves. Ah, that was justice. There's justice in this world and there's injustice in this world. And one of the big things you got to do when you when you become an adult is figure out which. And, and, you know, kids need to know it too. But you have to know it as an adult. And if there's an injustice, you got to fix it. It is your duty as a human being to fix it. If you see somebody uh, practicing racism, you need to stop it. There's a lot of people these days who call everything racism, and that deludes real racism, and it's a slap in the face to the people who have suffered real racism. And, you know, if you see somebody practicing racism, you have to stop it one way or the other. 
And I'm not saying be violent, but there's there's ways, you know. Um, yeah, I try not to get on my soapbox in these videos, but yeah, some things are worth it. Hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. God bless one and all. Clarissa Lowe, a historian from the future. Delmore Kane, a Civil War veteran turned outlaw. This oddball pairing faces a conspiracy of epic proportions spanning the centuries. If you like action and adventure westerns with a splash of science fiction and fantasy, check out my book series Drifters and their ongoing adventures.